One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Okay. Hmm. Wag for the $4. He says, hey, RVD, tell us more about your kickboxing time. Yeah, I thought that was a really interesting part of the documentary. We get the meat tip and uh, got a little background about it. And the footage, that was what was really neat is like you were kicking guys' asses that were like your size. But then I saw you kick a fat dude's ass and stuff like that in there, too. It was pretty neat. Um, so... So they don't tell this story, but uh, that the ring that it showed in the backyard, that was my backyard. Kit needed a place to put the ring after we had already been training in his yard for a while, developed a relationship. I don't know if we'd done any shows. Maybe after one show, we moved it to my yard. Anyway, um, I was in that ring every day you know whatever boxing wrestling kickboxing whatever hitting the heavy bag um loose ass real nylon ropes and 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 lumps of um unmatching random pieces of carpet padding under blue plastic tarp just piles randomly like hey i need some here you know put give me another one and just triangle with a big square small piece it was literally it was it was that's that's what it was and uh anyway um kid disappeared for a little while oh yeah and you know he'd made all these promises we had by this time it's in my yard and we'd already done a lot of you know all the shows with them the you know, rotation, we were sat in the ring up, chairs up, boom, 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 doing the whole thing for a while, and then he disappears. The fuck happened to Kit, right? And uh, couldn't get a hold of him, but he's not answering. And during this time, um, young little grasshopper Robbie uh, wanted to broaden the uh, his martial arts uh, resume and so that's when i went to the local dojos around battle creek and starting at the battle creek budokan with like you know my mom had bought like that coupon book those are popular back in the day you rip out like two free weeks of karate or whatever these guys taught karate a kendo and an aikido at the battle creek budokan and I started with them, got over really well with the instructors. They liked me. And then, like, um, you know, worked my way into free lessons and, and, and sparring and all that stuff. And then there was um, – there was uh, – there was Todd Tatami's Taekwondo, which Gene Mead was a student there. He used to teach me everything they learned from Todd Tatami brought me in there a few times and um Kella community college taught tongue pseudo and my friend eric or aaron 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 roberts not eric roberts but aaron roberts he brought me there a little bit and i learned a lot about like repositioning your footing and and stuff like that that, that, that stuck with me but um that was all that we had you know was that that was it in Battle Creek at that time. The Battle Creek Budokan, Todd Tadmi's Taekwondo, and um, and then at the Keller Community College. Um, and so anyway, they all seem to agree that Kit was bullshit. Oh. And they got into my head. And then, because they all, you know, he didn't, they were, they, he was an outsider to the to the local martial arts scene of Battle Creek. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to think of back now because that's how it was. It was like the, this council got together and said, you know, he's he's not really he fixes his fights. He, you know, he, he fights little kids so he can seem tough. You know, he, he you know he made his own championship belt. He glued it together. I saw him do it. You know, and and everyone was getting in my head. And at the same time, I was thinking, man, he's who knows where, 
you know, and uh, we got to fucking get to get some shows going and stuff, you know, and I start talking to some of the places we'd already done shows at Kodiak Lounge, um, some place out at St. Mary's Lake uh, and, and some other places, you know, trying to me be the promoter at 18, I guess I was. And, uh, you know, was working on stuff and I wanted to get a local thing going because I wanted to wrestle. I wanted to kickbox. I, you know, I, I, I was enjoying that and I was like really hungry to do it at that time. And, um, kid only had like one loss, no, two losses. I'm sorry. On his world middleweight karate council championship. And, uh, one of his losses was this dude named Terry Gay, Terry Gay, uh, one time I saw the motherfucker at the Lakeview Square Mall. I saw his jacket, Super T's Karate. I said, hey, hey, you know, what's up with that? And I uh, struck up a conversation, me and Dango did, and we ended up going to uh, Super T's Karate in Coldwater and training with Terry Gay, who, you know, prospectively <laughs> was be- was uh, um, a, a better fighter than Kit on another level. Um, maybe, you know, um, but at this time for sure in my mind, you know, cause everyone's got into my head. It, but the reason that I say that is he was just so good. He was a tall, linky dude and, and we would spar with him and he let us, uh, for free spar with his students, go through his classes and stuff. Cause his students need people to spar with and man, we would duke it out. Like we had some of the toughest sparring cause because we were a team, like me and Dango, whoever we had with us that we brought against his guys. You know, we, you know, it was just like Sabu in Japan getting me in the corner and saying, "Hey, don't sell their shit." You know, it, it was like that. And 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 man, like it was like I'd say ninety percent like uh, full on competition. The ten percent break being if you think you hurt somebody, then you stop. You say, "Whoa, you okay? Okay, good." Bam, 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 you know, and um, man, I learned a lot there. But Terry Gay was so quick. He he could he could punch me and I, I never see it coming. He would just be like, bam, and boom. And, and uh, man, I hated getting caught with his punches because I felt so slow. And uh, so that's why, you know, um, he was legit badass. Anyway, things are going good. And, uh, and and now I'm like, you know, fuck Kit. And, you know, besides all the shit that I've learned about him, he smokes pot. <gasps> what a fucking loser, right? <laughs> That's how I felt at the time. I was like, man, this guy fucking, you know what? This is my ring. What's that? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. I'm going to start running shows. So I'm working on that. I got some dates coming, but, you know, I'm excited. Setting this up, training. All of a sudden, this truck shows up in my yard one time. <clears throat> some people just walking through my yard. They start taking the ring apart in the backyard. Excuse me. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, Kit sent us over here to get. Uh, you can get the fuck out, right? Um, I kicked him out of the yard. I didn't know what to do. I took the whole ring apart in panic mode. Ching, 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 ching. Took the whole thing apart. And then uh, I'm like, okay, where can I hide it? And then I'm like, the fuck are you doing? You know, it's not really my ring. What am I going to do? And how long am I going to keep this up anyway? It's Battle Creek, you know? He's going to know right? wherever I hide the ring. Oh, no. It's a small town. Yeah. Um, and I ended up, took it apart, and it's sitting there. And I ended up, uh, we had a sit down mm-hmm. at uh, Speed's Cafe in Verona. Right there on Capitol Avenue, right there at the bend, across from where he lived. Uh, where the ring was, where I first spotted it when I drove by, very close there. And uh, we had a, a sit down, you know, and it was like, Rob, what are you doing? And I'm like, where you been, man? You can't just show up 
have people in my yard not even telling me they're coming over. Uh, we had some words back and forth. I realized that I was in the wrong and I was very disappointed because I figured this motherfucking crackhead's going to sell the ring and nothing, no one's ever going to do anything in Battle Creek ever again. He's going to sell it for his crack money because he smokes pot. He's a loser. Fuck yeah. All right, man. Send him back over tomorrow. I'll, I'll let him in the yard. They come over. They get the ring. They leave. Fuck, I'm still in. Mm, mm, mm. He fucking ruined my dreams. Yeah. Motherfucker. And, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, and at this point, you know, I've been training with Terry Gay, you know, all of a sudden I find out he set the ring up in this backyard, not too far from where Speeds was and from where he lived, uh, not too far from there. And I was, someone told me he's there right now working out with a bunch of kids, beating the shit out of little kids. I'm like, dude, this is the time when the young grasshopper becomes the master. I was like, shoom, did a fucking run in. (laughs) I show up in the backyard and and I see him in there, you know, sparring with these, with these kids. And of course he notices me, you know, just fucking staring at him and shit. He's like, Rob, you, uh, did you, did you want to get in the ring? I said, oh, sure, okay, yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't mind I get in the ring, uh, put the gloves on. I got, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to fucking put this guy down. I'm putting him fucking down, man. Fuck this. I, I've been knocking people out now. I'm fucking, you know, I'm a badass. Uh, let's do this. You know, he don't know. He don't know. I've been lifting weights. I'm a massive 180 pounds now. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, okay, bing, let's go, right? We come at each other. We both got our our gloves up, right? He taught me how to put my guard up and how to look over the top of my glove. And my opponent actually used my my gloves, you know, as, as protection from my face, right? But what he didn't teach me was I threw a, a, a crescent kick, an inside crescent kick. Okay. It comes across like a windshield wiper and it hooked his gloves. And so it pulled his gloves down with my foot exposing his face, right? Bam, bam, bam. He put his gloves back up. I did the same thing. Oh, hold on. Let me, this is going to be slow motion so that I don't knock too many things over. <laughs> I already knocked over the Yeti. Uh, yeah, work our glizzler up, and here comes the, the crescent kick. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it hooked his gloves, and it pulled his gloves down. Bam, 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 bam. And he put his gloves up again. And then he goes, hold it. And there's the whole world stop. Put my gloves down. Here comes a really fast sucker punch. Bam! Boom! He says, Rob, you get out of my ring with that attitude. You do not show up here with that kind of energy ever. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm just working out. And he says, you get the hell out of here. And he said, or if you want, we can take the gloves off right now and we can go at it if that's what you really want to do. And now I'm like, oh, shit, now it's back on me. You know, how far do I want to take this? Fuck, you know, this is a full-grown motherfucker here, kid. He's been he's been in a lot more bar fights and shit than I have. I know he's got some dirty tricks, but I'm pretty confident, though. Yeah, but maybe. Hmm. You know, what should I do? Everyone's looking at me, you know, even Cherie Scott, which, you know, that's another thing against him. He's banging Cherie Scott. She was in my class, in my grade, and I always liked her. She's looking at me. No, I'm good. 
I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, workout. I took the gloves down. I walked out. And in my mind, I was like, yes, that was so fucking awesome. And, uh, and, uh, and I left and, you know, I don't know when it was that Kit and I made up, um, but it had a lot to do with me just growing up, being more experienced meeting many, many Kit Likenses in my career, um, you know, from different wrestling promoters to just different characters. Uh, and so I'm really proud to have him as the guy, you know, that broke me in, that first let me in the ring, started training me. And, you know, even though a lot of a lot of people that, you know, that were um, given people belts, uh, you know, black belts and, you know, going through the, the, the martial arts belt system when he was doing the championship belts in the ring because kickboxing is a sport. And, and then the, regardless of what white belt or black belt, taekwondo, karate, whatever, judo, it didn't matter. It's a sport. Didn't matter how old you were, you put the gloves on, the, the headgear, and bam, let's see what happens. And you try to knock each other out, you know. And, and so anyway, um, I learned eventually uh, not only to respect him, but I'm glad he made it in my in my bio. And um, I think um, I think he told that story like almost the exact same way somewhere, but I can't remember where I would have heard him tell the story. But uh, that's what happened, though, dude. And there's, there's, there you go. There's some, uh, there's some bonus material for you. I like that, man. That's, I was captivated, Rob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was captivated. That was some good shit, 